Hey everyone, welcome to Rocast, the show where we specifically discuss nothing specific at all. I'm your host, Travis Kunze, and this is our first official episode of Rocast. I am super excited for it. We have a great guest with us here today, as we will be discussing whether or not vlogging is a professional source of marketing for companies today. Uh, and so I want to take a moment to introduce our guest, Corey Steiner. Corey, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, not a problem. I appreciate you coming here. So, Corey, uh, what is some of your experience with marketing and social media? Oh, my gosh. Where do I even begin? Um, I've been in marketing for 11 years now. I got my start as a freelance graphic designer and slowly worked my way up through the ranks, if you will, doing pretty much everything there is to do in marketing and um, finding what I was good at and focusing on on that specifically. Um, this could be a very long conversation, so you might want to steer this with some more questions. <laughs> Not a problem. So uh, <laughs> what inspired you to go into marketing? Um, what kind of drew you into that? That's a great question. Um, you know, when I was about 25, I want to say, I was out uh, just kind of going on a hike in the countryside, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And um, it might sound kind of silly, but I was actually praying about how to use all of my talents in a form of uh, income making. And it was almost like a no-brainer because um, it just hit me, marketing. It's the one place where you can use music, video, photography, graphic design, writing, and why not? So then I got into, like I said, graphic design and then worked my way through not just that, but video is a part of it. And um, actually, I got started doing video when I was 14 years old. And it you know, wasn't until I was like 26, 27, I realized I could do this and make money with it. So, yeah. <laughs> <It's>... that, so <clears throat> that's definitely pretty cool. A nice way to uh, get inspired. You, you, using nature to get inspired to work in the world of technology and media. Yeah, it's polar opposites, but they, they go together very well. Um, so what do you like own your own business at this point or do you work for someone specific or I do both actually I have a small business called the web commander and this is going from me doing social media and everything for entrepreneurs to turning it into the web commander academy where entrepreneurs can learn how to do these things themselves and that being social media and video and, and uh, blogging and just the whole gamut of things that are mandatory in today's marketplace okay yeah that's awesome um so would you uh how many people would you say you work for on a regular basis or that you do marketing for on a regular basis oh it's so sporadic it comes and goes but since i got started i've probably worked for about 30 different companies okay awesome and for between those companies um how often did you work with uh doing video blogs uh specifically I would say a good half of those. Um, it depends on the age demographic you're working with. The older crowd almost doesn't see the value in creating video for the marketplace. But people our age, you know, like 40 and below, I don't know, you're probably like 35, right? Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, between, oh, I would say at least nowadays, children up, you know, be, like the age of 10 all the way up through 40 require uh, visual content and you know creating video is definitely you know one of the two great ways to go at that as far as video photography and uh, graphic design that's three but I was lumping video and photography in the same boat right so would you say <clears throat> that um, you know based on your experience that you've had a larger outreach you've connected with more people do via vlogging over other marketing methods or you're mostly just hitting like that specific age range well, I would say it doesn't necessarily matter anymore because we're living in this uh, mobile revolution where everybody seems to have a device in their hand or within five feet of them 90% of the day. So to create content using video that's mobile specific, let's say um, formatted for, for mobile, is um, it's incredibly paramount. So you know, not going that route would be um, disastrous for any business that's trying to grow right now. So I'm not even sure if I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a problem. So 
but I do like <clears throat> what you had to say that you know that everything everyone has something in their hand or near them you know whether it's a mobile phone whether it's a tablet whether it's your laptop your computer whatever it is everyone has something near them and so we've become really technology surrounded and so mm -hmm. with keeping that in mind what kind of format have you found more successful for vlogging do you think just kind of sporadic spur of the moment vlogs where someone speaks what's on their mind or in their hearts uh, has been more successful or do you think something that's more like planned out scripted and formatted has worked better or maybe it depends on your audience oh it definitely depends on your audience and you know doing those simultaneously um, has been very successful for um, some individuals now I would say as far as um, being spontaneous is concerned that is definitely a really good place to use Facebook live as opposed to really wanting to get a formulated message across using um, a variety of engagements, which would be like uh, environmental or um, technological. And what I mean when I say those things is um, the greatest example I could really boil that down to is Casey Neistat's vlog. This guy is an incredible storyteller. And I guess really that's what I'm trying to say. If you're going to go into a message that's that's a compelling story, definitely go the, the vlog route using YouTube as opposed to being spontaneous and using Facebook Live. Now, they're both great platforms, and I wouldn't say one trumps the other one. It really depends, like you said, on your audience and also it depends on the timing. So, okay. okay, awesome. So overall, like, as let's look at it at a different perspective. As an audience member, which one tends to reach you more, the spontaneous uh, like Facebook Live method or the more structured uh, YouTube method? I don't really know if um, one of them is more uh, accessible. It, it really depends on where they're placing it. And what I mean by that is if you create a Facebook Live video versus creating a YouTube video but share them both on Facebook, obviously Facebook Live is going to be there automatically, it's going to have almost the same amount of uh, engagement and viewership taking a look at vlogging as a method do you think that it's something that companies are becoming more open to whether it's small businesses or large corporations or do you think it's still something that's kind of like in that early introduction stage where people are like this is different and i'm not quite ready to move into that or maybe i'll never be ready to move into that do you think it's growing more quicker or if it's still something kind of slowly working its way into businesses actually i think it's kind of the opposite i think there are a lot of businesses who haven't got on that boat yet because this thing left years ago and so for an individual company or an entrepreneur to feel that uh, video isn't something isn't a medium that they could really benefit from their perspective of how useful video is is a skewed because video is the only content or the only media channel I should say um, where you can give your prospective buyers an experience with your company whether it's in stores in your office before they leave their house to make a purchase decision and that's really where you're going to find um, creating more loyal customers is going to take place because if they can become familiar with you before they even open up their wallet or their checkbook, they're more likely to become a loyal customer for life. So video is definitely something that is underutilized by a lot of companies and some saturate the marketplace very well with it, but you have to be careful how you do it. And there's a lot of companies that are doing video, but they're not doing it correctly. And that's kind of a shame to see. And I've actually seen companies kind of crumble because they just went the totally wrong route with video. Okay. Uh, so what do you mean by not doing it correctly? Like, what were they doing that was causing them to fail in that area? They were being too safe. They were being too sterile. And uh, they were too worried about offending people. I'm not saying you should try to go out there and stomp on people's feelings. But you should really be genuine and be true to your, your brand values. And that's one area where a lot of companies who do video lack. They share no brand values with any of their marketing and especially in video. And video is such a great medium to do that plus share your brand personality. That's huge. You can't do that on any other sort of media outlet. You can try with photography and graphic design, but it's not going to have the same impact that video would have. So doing it correctly requires putting some personality into it and putting some value to it. And um, 
one of my favorite examples of this, and you might be familiar with this, is Duck Commander. Okay. I love this company. And they, they wear their values on their sleeve, which is Faith Family and Ducks. And every time you see them put out a video, it either has something to do with them sharing their faith, sharing uh, family value, family time stuff, or um, duck hunting, obviously. Right. So, and I see them as doing this correctly. This is genius marketing. And uh, when they do their videos, it's, it's very casual because it's more often than not them duck hunting or them showing you a new product. Now, you can't do this with like a blog itself where you're just writing about it and get the same sort of impact. So being able to understand what your brand values are is really important going into creating any video content and doing it that way would be doing it correctly okay yeah that, that definitely makes sense and i love following the duck commander guys I, I honestly i think some of their most successful videos at least the ones that impact me the most are the ones where they're sharing their family values especially in the world that we live in today where it seems like we see less and less of that in mainstream media um, mm -hmm. And so I, I definitely really like their style of, hey, let's bring it back to the basics of, you know, love, faith, you know, family, the, the important mm -hmm. things in life. Um, yeah. So would you say that uh, vlogging will eventually take over where commercials currently are, where, you know, mainstream media television commercials will kind of fade away and vlogging will take its place where we'll start to see vlogging methods on mainstream media? That is a great question, and I want to say both yes and no to that. Um, yes, because uh, Facebook Live is huge, and I think it was recently Google TV just introduced, like yesterday I think it was, um, a specific channel for just Facebook Live. Now, that is a huge jump into the direction that you're talking about where uh, the ability to just vlog is going to be something where it's going to be almost as big as you know, turning on your television and watching something on, on what we now know as regular cable. Um, so in that direction, yes. But at the same time, I think it's going to be a long, long time, maybe 30 to 50 years before people decide that they're going to completely give up television. But who knows? I mean, we are in such a technological revolution right now that there could be advances that come out in the next 10 years where people are just going to be so tired of regular television with regular predictable commercials and you know but then again that sort of thing has to be regulated because anybody and everybody could produce something that could be you know show up in your uh, in your stream so you know there's got to be some sort of form of regulation about that and you know so then you get into all of this red tape and blah 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 it gets very can <laughs> very complex so i guess we'll just have to wait and see but Facebook itself in the next five years primarily wants to be just video based. So, you know, there's a lot of other media outlets that are really paying attention to what Facebook is doing because it's almost like if you try to find somebody in your circle of friends, how many of them don't use Facebook? You know, almost all of them do. And this is the society that we live in. Right. You know, so, yeah. And, that, and that's kind of cool because, you know, Facebook, Facebook was definitely one of the bigger starters for social media in general and advertising over social media. I mean, you, I'm fairly certain MySpace came before Facebook. I don't know that hundred percent for sure. Um, it did, but obviously MySpace has kind of fallen away. It's faded into the darkness, and while it still <laughs> exists, nobody particularly goes on it unless they're looking for a good laugh. And but Facebook's kind of they've. It's like they've mastered that method of seeing what people are doing and going, Hey, this is what they like. So this is what we're going to approach. This is what we're going to target specifically. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, um, a couple of years ago, I heard that Facebook was beginning to, um, work on the groundwork for their own search engine, which would be a rival to Google. So, you know, you take all of the video stuff and you take it's, it's socialness, it's connectivity and it's going to eventually create a monster that's going to make what Facebook is now look like, um, you know, a kitten. So it's there's definitely a huge, huge technological boom that's even ahead of us yet. And we haven't even seen the best part. Right. Definitely. Well, and so you, you compared uh, or you mentioned that Facebook is potentially building the groundworks for its own search engine to compete with Google. 
I personally use Google on almost a daily basis. It's my favorite search engine. I never have any problems finding anything with it. Do you think Facebook has a chance of competing with Google? I think it does. I think if it plays its cards right and it continues to build its audience, um, I mean, right now, it's like the number one social media platform. And uh, Google tried doing that with Google Plus, and I think that failed miserably. It's still out there, and they haven't really done anything to update it recently. Google is a great platform, and I have nothing bad to say about it. It's just that Facebook, if you look at the trend of how it's been growing and at the pace it's been growing, I would say that it is definitely going to give Google a very good run for its money in the near future. For someone who isn't into the vlogging network yet, who hasn't started it but is considered considering getting into it and is interested in it, what are some recommendations or tips that you would have for you know getting to that starting point? Oh, okay. Well, that's a great question. That's something that I wish somebody would have um, given me the answer to about 12 years ago. <laughs> um, the very first place I would tell anybody who's looking to do a vlog to start is um, understand your why. Why are you doing what you're going to do? And whether you're going to create a vlog about helping people understand how to fix their vehicles or you're going to be creating a vlog on how to teach people how to build houses you really understand why you're going to be doing what you're going to do and then the second thing is have a very firm grasp of who your customer is don't generalize it you know narrow it down to a 10-year age gap a gender um and nowadays that might be more difficult <laughs> and um you know just get as granular with it as possible and then the uh, third thing is uh, understand what your your brand value is. And it might be two or three things. Um, again, don't generalize. Be very specific and you know use that as a part of creating your content. You're going to fall back on why you do what you do, who you're doing it for, and what your values are. And this is going to create a formula that's going to help you to go viral much quicker than if you're going to spend two or three years doing trial and error and just shooting in the dark. So... I would say that is definitely a great place to start. Awesome. And so let's talk more of the equipment side a little bit, you know, because with vlogging, it's a video camera. You want good quality video. You want mm -hmm. good quality audio. Do you have any recommendations for someone who might be on a low budget, a starting budget for what they can either get equipment wise or, um, you know, what are your recommendations for that? That's a great question. Um, you can start out with your phone. You know, nowadays everybody has a smartphone where, the video capabilities and audio capabilities are very good. Uh, granted, you're not still using a flip phone, of course, but if you're using an iPhone or a, a modern Android device, that is definitely a great place to start. Um, you can upgrade your microphone to, you know, using a small Rode mic. I know they've got some that are budget friendly you can use for that, or um, you can do like a lapel mic style with that. So that would be a great place to start. Otherwise, working your way up the ranks, there are so many different choices that you have for consumer-friendly cameras. Um, personally, I like using a Canon DSLR camera. I'm still using an old um, T2i. Okay. And, um, you know, they just released a new one not too long ago, which is amazing. It does 4K. And, you know, <laughs> the moment I can afford some 4K equipment, that's where I'm sticking my money. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so is there anything else that you kind of want to add uh, about vlogging? Or actually, here's another question for you. Yeah. Do you think that other platforms of marketing like, um, you know, regular blogs or uh, graphic uh, advertisements, stuff like that, do you think that those can compete with vlogging still? Or do you think vlogging is eventually going to become the primary market for marketing? Well, I think if you're a compelling storyteller, you can pretty much use any of those to really generate a lot of buzz. But vlogging is going to be the place where you're going to see the most impact the quickest, unless you're putting a lot of money into advertising your graphic design or your, your blogs. Um, with blogging, it has a lot to do with SEO and SEM. And if you don't know what either of those mean... I probably wouldn't blog if I were you. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you might want to use your friend Google to figure those things out. Um, and as far as graphic design, it's really just a tool, if you ask me. I mean, I've been in it since I was a kid. Primarily, I got started with crayons when I was five. But <laughs> um, vlogging, I would say, is definitely the way to go. And 
you know, if you applied the the SDM strategies to it, like you would with a blog, you're going to see an exponential amount of growth on something like that. Because nowadays, it's so much easier to pick up your phone and watch a video than it is to read something or to try to figure out what's in the graphic. Because it's really, I mean, it's a big screen, but when you're trying to figure out what's inside the image, it's not big enough. Whereas with video, you know, it, it gives you everything that you need right there and the only key I think is be a good storyteller. That's really a necessity to being a blogger. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so this will kind of be the last question I have here for you. So as we enter into vlogging and as an industry, do you think that virtual reality and vlogging will kind of get together at some point and make marketing even bigger? Or do you think that they're going to remain separate entities from each other? I don't, I don't know if they'll ever be completely separated from one another from, you know, the last couple of years forward, because um, even right now, a lot of people may not know this, but you can put, um, you can watch just about any video on YouTube using a Google cardboard and kind of have a virtual experience with that. And then there's also um, augmented reality apps, you know, like we've seen uh, Pokemon Go. Well, there's companies that are developing similar uh, software, but for marketing purposes. So you could walk down the street and then just kind of point your phone, you know, camera on towards, you know, the south side of the street. And you're going to see all of these um, graphics pop up that are going to tell you about sales happening at this store and sales happening at that store. And it's going to completely revolutionize the way we use mobile devices and do marketing. So it's probably never going to be separated, you know, going into the future. Okay. Awesome. Well, I don't have any other questions. I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add uh, about vlogging and the other thoughts. Um, you know, I think I pretty much covered all of the, um, the nuts and bolts of it. There's a lot of detail that goes into creating it and formatting. Um, bottom line, I would say anybody who's looking to get into vlogging needs to watch Casey Neistat's channel on youtube it is incredibly inspiring and he is an amazing storyteller the way he uses locations and technology and relationships is he's very human centric you know he markets to human beings whereas some vloggers like i said earlier might try to be safe and sterile and you know you can't live in a bubble where you're going to try not to offend somebody because eventually somebody who's looking for a fight is going to come knocking anyway so right yep definitely well, I want to thank you, Corey, for being on the sh our, on our first episode. Um, you know, this is definitely an experiment for us, so I appreciate you coming and taking the time to be a part of the show. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Not a problem. And for anyone uh, who's listening, we do have new episodes of the show coming out every week. Uh, it'll be every Monday. Uh, for if you guys are interested in more of what Corey is doing, we'll have uh, in our description below links to his social media accounts that he wants to share or any other content he wants to share. We'll also have links in the description to different things that we discussed today. If you're looking to find out more information, please feel free to subscribe to our channel, share the podcast, leave comments or questions, and we will respond and we'll discuss things with you. And I would imagine we could even get Corey back on at some other time to uh, maybe do a Q&A or discuss other things. I love it. Right, awesome. Well, thank you again, everybody. And we will see you next week on Rowcast. <laughs>